Welcome back to the garage, guys. We've got an exciting video today. Today, we're releasing free upgrades to the Gen 2 plan and to the XL plan. So what are we doing? Well, we've updated the firmware and we've added three new features for you. The, number one, a new way to connect to the machine. Number two, backlash compensation. Number three, jerk compensation. With the new firmware update, we've added an access point. And what this is, is this is the controller hosted Wi-Fi. So with that, you'll be able to connect directly from the controller to your machine using Wi-Fi without having Wi-Fi in your shop. So this is a huge deal. Uh, kind of acts like Bluetooth, but in a different way. With this access point that's being hosted on the ESP32 controller, you can give it your own name, you can give it your own password, and we recommend putting a cool name with it, like JD's Garage Plasma Cutter. So I've got the firmware loaded onto the controller. Um, I've also got the settings configured for the Wi-Fi access point. Now all it's time to do is just set it up. So I'm gonna open up my Wi-Fi settings down here on Windows. And you can see the Gerbil access, or the Gerbil how AP, that's the network name. I'm gonna to connect to it, type in my password. There we go. So it'll say no internet secured when I'm actually connected to it. And then all I'm gonna do is scan the network. I'm gonna scan this subnet here and I know what my Wi-Fi access point path or uh, IP address is because it tells me down here in the serial terminal. I've already connected to it with the USB cable. I'm going to scan the network and it found one device and it's our machine. So I'm going to connect to our machine and now I can jog it around Go back and forth, test all the axes. So now that that's connected, everything seems to be working fine. I'm just gonna send the torch to home. The second thing that's new in the plans is backlash compensation. Now what is backlash? So when you're moving in one direction and one direction and one direction and you start moving in a different direction or the opposite direction, there's always going to be in every machine some amount of take up that happens before the actual uh, gantry or mechanism starts moving in the reverse order. Now, does it matter? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But we're giving you the ability to compensate if your machine has that. Now, will your machine have it? We're not sure. Every machine's built different. Your belt tension might be different than ours. So uh, with that, you're gonna have a way to compensate if you have backlash. So now that I've got the Wi-Fi connection set up, I'm just gonna leave it connected to the machine like that for the rest of the video because I don't wanna drag the cable around. But what we're gonna do now is calculate the backlash if there is any on the X and Y axes. So you can see I have a big 25 pound plate here that my dial indicator is um, mounted to. You can really use anything that you want, just something that's big enough so that it'll keep the dial indicator secure. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is jogging my Y axis in, into my dial indicator to take up any backlash. So I'm gonna set my dial indicator to zero. Uh, looks like we're a little bit off here. So we'll set it to zero and then I'm gonna jog it the same direction again, now that I know my backlash is taken up. And then I'm gonna jog it back the exact same distance in the opposite direction. And if there's zero backlash, the dial indicator should go exactly back to where it was. So it's not quite exactly back to where it was. It might be hard to tell, but we're about four, four and a half thousand soft. So I don't know what that is in millimeters, but we can convert that and then add that to our Gerbil settings. So I'm gonna do the same procedure on the X axis. Okay, so I've got the dial indicator now on in line with my X axis. I've got just a little bit of preload um, on the dial indicator here with my uh, X axis gantry. And now I'm gonna do the same process as I did with the Y axis. 
and set this to an incremental jog, jog it into my dial indicator. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to zero. Okay. I'm gonna jog it into my dial indicator again. Then I'm gonna jog it back the upper, the opposite direction away from my indicator. And this one's actually, yeah, this one's quite a bit more. This one's probably about 20, 28 thousandths of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead, convert that to millimeters and then put that back into my gerbil settings. Number three. Jerk compensation. Well, what's jerk compensation? Exactly what it is. Now, in an easier way to explain it, I decided to ask AI, and this is what AI said. It says it's an advanced motion control algorithm to manage the rate of change of acceleration or jerk to produce smoother motion. So that's exactly what's happening. Now, Jackson tried to explain it to me, but it's been so long since I've had calculus, I don't remember anything about it. So he said, if you don't remember calculus, you won't remember how to explain jerk. The other thing that we're not adding at this time, we're not going into for you engineer types is we're not gonna go into the snap, crackle, pop. So I got those backlash settings entered in the, the controller and they ended up being uh, about 0 0.1 millimeters for the Y axis and about 0 0.7 millimeters for the X. So pretty small numbers. So now we're going to move on to the jerk and we actually tuned the jerk for both the gen 2 and the xl machines probably three or four months ago and have been running it ever since and how we did that was we 3d printed this little bracket here with an accelerometer here and we did have an esp controller here um, it's not here now because we're using all the ones we have but basically this whole tab here went right where this torch bar is so we could see the forces acting on the torch when we were jogging in our x and y directions and basically what we wanted to do was collect the data with this setup to get acceleration charts so the reason why you want the acceleration charts is they actually tell you the force being enacted on the machine while it's moving so the reason why you want to tune the tune jerk is because you don't want spikes or really weird movements on your acceleration chart because that actually translate to spikes or jerkiness in the machine when it's moving. I'm not gonna go through the entire process of doing uh, that whole setup in this video. If you guys want us to make a video about that, let us know in the comments. But what we've gone ahead, if we've tuned our jerk settings on the XL that you see here and on the Gen 2, and we're just gonna give you pretty good default settings in the plans and if you just don't want to use them then just don't use them so we've got all those settings uh entered in the gerbil controller we've got a piece of metal here and we're just going to cut out a full design to see what it can do That doesn't look too bad. We're gonna go ahead and uh, clean this up and then give it a fresh coat of paint. Now the plans have a recommended setting for backlash and jerk. And there's also a procedure for setting belt tension now in the plan. So take a look at that, even if you're not going with these options. We've decided to remove Bluetooth from the plans. Bluetooth seems to work fine in most cases, but sometimes if you have a, a very large G-code file, it can get laggy at times during the cut. It just doesn't have the bandwidth for some of these large files where this Wi-Fi access point is a much better way to connect than Bluetooth. So with these three new features that are being added to the firmware, they're optional. You can choose to use none of them or one of them, two of them, three of them, or all of them. It's up to you. They don't have to be used. It's options for you to use if you feel comfortable using them. If you guys like what we're doing, and like these features that we're adding, please consider buying us a cup of coffee in the link below. 
uh, that'll go towards the channel, help supporting the channel to help us keep making videos and to keep adding features to the machines that already exist. With that, I'd like to thank everyone for sticking around to the end and make sure to like and subscribe.